It's Pi Augustine, your Division 1 candidate for Ipswich. My plan is for a community that is vibrant and attracts world investment. A community that is connected with the -the state-of-the-art transport system. A community that cares for our people and environment at a time of need. Division 1 needs a councillor that has the energy and motivation to get things done. A community champion. Find out more about me on my Facebook page, Pi Augustine for Division 1. This ad was approved by Pi Augustine Candidate. Ipswich deserves strong and stable leadership you know you can trust. I'm Mayor Teresa Harding, and as your Mayor, Ipswich is once again a city that businesses are proud to invest in and families love to call home. To keep our city moving forward, I'm committed to reducing cost of living pressures, expanding our road and transport networks, delivering more for our suburbs, and boosting investment in grassroots sports in our community. So vote one Teresa Harding for Mayor for sustainable growth through Ipswich. Authorised by T Harding, 264 South Station Road, Raceview. Coming up, independent candidate for Division 3, David Box, is running again after being unsuccessful in 2020. In this episode, he details his approach to connecting with residents and why he should get your vote. It's Monday, February 26, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. At this year's Ipswich City Council election, some eight candidates who ran in 2020 and who were unsuccessful are stepping up to have another go. One of those is David Box, former Queensland Times boss. He has nominated again for Division 3. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today, David. Thank you very much for the invitation, Alan. Some would say you've come back for more punishment. Why are you running again? Well, Ipswich is an amazing city. Uh, we have such a diverse array of quality arts, sports, food, retail, technological and tourism offerings. It's incredible and it should be inspiring. For all his faults, when Paul Pasali was in office, what he did was he inspired residents. And that's what I want to bring back to town. You couldn't go to an event that he spoke at without walking away thinking that Ipswich was amazing. There were 12 candidates in Division 3 in 2020. This time, half that number, only six. You came in midfield with a reasonably strong result. What did you learn from that first campaign? Uh, I learned that you really need to connect with the community. And it was really hard to do that during the last campaign because of COVID. So, you know, when in those final weeks uh, when we really needed to ramp up uh, our communication, uh, we weren't able to. So what are you doing this time to redress that problem? Uh, This time I'm going to um, have a video up on social media uh, talking about my uh, plans uh, and and how I feel about the city. Uh, I'm also looking at doing um, a flyer drop this time, which I did not do last time. So going to connect uh, straight to uh, residents' letterboxes. Um, and as well as uh, putting up uh, the usual the usual uh, core flutes as well. Ipswich is a difficult city to cover with just one or two media outlets, unlike, say, if you lived in Toowoomba or, or Townsville, where you also have the benefit of local TV news. So you, you've acknowledged that it is more difficult. So let's get into some of the detail of what you'll be campaigning on. So far on social media, you haven't put a lot. What will be your priorities? So I don't actually have a specific set of plans or promises that I'm going to deliver on because I feel like that would be all about what I want. As a councillor, it's my duty to listen to our residents' concerns, discuss them with my fellow councillors and use our combined knowledge and experience to develop strategies and policies to address these concerns. Councillors are supposed to be a conduit between residents and council. So communication is really important to me. All I hear at the moment is councillors aren't allowed to talk to residents or council staff. There's nothing in either state or Ipswich council codes of conduct that prohibits this. I mean, certainly I can't promise a resident I'll fix their road and I can't ask a council employee to include mowing an extra park on their duty list, but we can talk to everyone. Uh, I'm also sick of hearing about uh, councillors that have RSVP to attend events and not shown up. That's just really disrespectful and rude. So there are a couple of projects that I would like to work on if I was elected, but these won't necessarily be my primary focus. 
What are those uh, projects? You ov- you obviously have something in mind. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the CBD, everyone's talking about how we can fill this commercial space, uh, but we need to be thinking about how we can get people there to make those commercial businesses viable. We have so much unused commercial space, and we've also at the same time got a major housing crisis. So I'd like to be looking at ways of uh, converting the empty unused commercial space into residential opportunities uh, and also looking at new high-rise residential opportunities. Uh, I have a colleague at Rotary um, who recently, he's got a business in town and recently tried to convert upstairs into residential. Uh, And the amount of red tape and bureaucracy that he came up against uh, almost made it impossible. And and that's what one of the things I'd like to focus on. Well, in many great cities of the world, uh, residential accommodation is fairly commonplace above retail at street level. Uh, What other priorities do you have? Yeah, I'd also really like to look at reducing or reviewing the efficiency of our road repair services. I've seen instances of roads having to be done again within six months of being finished. Also, I have plans for the entire city as well. So a major issue I see plaguing the whole city is illegal dumping. So councillors, we need to to work together to develop a strategy to combat this rising problem, uh, which is causing the city to become ugly. Uh, We also need to be looking at ways we can reduce the amount of waste we're dumping in Swan Bank and surrounding areas. Ramondas did have a plan to reduce the amount of waste going into the ground by 87%. Now, that plan definitely had its issues, but with new technology emerging every day, we need to be focusing on identifying ways we can reduce the amount of waste going into the ground. Those companies out there have, you know, decade-long leases uh, and they're going to be dumping anyway. We really need to look at ways that we can reduce the amount that is going into the ground. Uh, I'd also like to explore the possibility of installing a solar-powered autonomous bus service to connect Springfield and Ipswich. You know, at the moment, we're at the mercy of the state government regarding a a Springfield to Ipswich rail connection. Now, the council already has the land set aside. And if we can look at partnering with a third-party bus service provider we could combine this with a cycling track uh, as well as um, a walking track to make it a, a multi-purpose transport connection. Can we just flesh that out a bit more? Where, where exactly are you thinking that council uh, has land for such a purpose? Yeah, there is a, there is a rail corridor uh, that's that's already uh, planned that council has uh, that land set aside for. Um, okay, I, I, I'm not sure whether it's council or the state government, but but either way, you would need state government uh, support for such an idea. Potentially, and and you know that that's that's something that, that we'd have to flesh out as part of the uh, as part of that review as well. But I just I just think that type of um, that type of facility would make it much more cost effective to be able to install the infrastructure. It would allow more access points because you wouldn't have to have, you know, stations that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and it would minimise the disruption. You know, I'm sure there's lots of people who have have land and houses along that current rail corridor that, you know, if a train was was to be uh, put through there, uh, the noise um, is would be would be a major issue. Uh, an autonomous bus service would would negate that. David Box, the CBD redevelopment, that's the commercial property owned by council, is coming to the end of its redevelopment and leasing. It was originally touted as a 10 to 15 year project back in 2009. Do you think the current council has handled this end of the redevelopment correctly? I think they're doing a really good job with what they've got. Um, I'm really sick of hearing about the previous council did this, the previous council did that. You know, what the previous mayor and councillors did to this city was disgraceful. Some have been charged criminally and some are not, but whether it's criminal or not, the misuse and mistreatment of ratepayers' money for their own benefit for so many years was morally and ethically wrong. You know, fancy dinners, overseas trips, private jets and a host of auction items mysteriously ending up in their home is not how councillors should serve their residents. You know, due to that behaviour, and the decisions that they made, Ipswich is really going to have some tough times financially over the next few decades. But we really have to move on. I'm I'm hoping that residents can rid ourselves of any tainted ex-councillors or state government members and elect a group of inspired leaders like myself to return 
positivity and pride back to Ipswich. On your Facebook page, you say that your aim is to improve communication between council and residents. Uh, Listen to residents' needs and use your critical thinking skills and analytical mind to develop plans and strategies to meet those needs. Can you give me some examples of where communication needs to be improved between council and residents? Yeah, well, like I said earlier, all I hear at the moment um, is that the councillors aren't allowed to talk to residents uh, and we need to be getting out into the community, uh, attending community events, uh, being seen um, at, at school events, uh, networking, also attending you know, the Chamber of Commerce events, uh, and we just need to be talking to as many residents as we can. Uh, at the moment, I'm sure uh, there's uh, staff that, or councillors that, that visit uh, residents in their homes, uh, nursing homes, just being out in the community, Alan, just being as many places as possible. I think all candidates would probably describe themselves as having uh, critical thinking skills and the like. What difference would you bring to the council chamber? Well, I've actually uh, I've done um, university study uh, and I've done courses on critical thinking. Uh, so I've actually, um, as as part of my uh, tertiary education, I've got I've got critical thinking uh, skills. Uh, so yeah, I, I just think they're they're at a at a another level. David Box, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you, Alan. And that's it for this episode. Don't forget to look for handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. From legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode. Or go to ipswichtoday.com.au.